Well, Charlie, welcome to the program. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, firstly, uh, what, what's been your situation at Te Papa Station in terms of, uh, well, I guess the carnage from the cyclone? A bit weird is the only way to kind of say it. But, I mean, sitting at kind of the front, the house end, it's been pretty much the only slips happened have been above the wall shed. So obviously, but then my main access culvert got taken away. And then just a creek crossing, that's been taken away. So I was pretty lucky I left a bike on the other side of the creek, otherwise it'd be four weeks of no access. Unbelievable. And now, of course, now you've, you've had a, a few big decisions to make with regard to your farming. Um, tell us what, what's been going on. 2021 kind of just made the decision just to go, no, nah, we're out. Mm. It was just getting too hard, you know, both mentally, financially, physically. So it's just that, nah, that's it, had enough. You know, the, so we sold it ironically into forestry, but they, yeah, those guys did the best deal for us, mm. you know, moving forward into the future. So, yeah, so we planted two thirds last winter. So, and that's the, other, so we're, finish off the planting this winter so still had a hundred odd hectares muck about with so and mm. ironically that's where all the, the only damage happened was on the hundred hectares on grazing <laughs> so everything they a, planted is not a slip it's just like mm, typical it's a, a huge decision obviously and i suppose you're thinking about uh, you're doing the right thing i mean it's productive farmland and a lot of it already on the east coast going to uh, to forestry but but the, the, it all just aligned up you just you know it was the right decision to make yeah very yeah very much so i mean we're three quarters surrounded by forestry anyway so it's kind of very and the neighbors certainly were very limited on finances because they're doing their succession planning so yeah and so we're just too small you know 460 hectares it's just wasn't really a viable sized farm. So you, what, 60 years it's been in the family, the, the farm, the property? The original tea path was quite small. It was only about well, 300 acres, 350 yeah. acres. So it's at about 150 hectares, which my grandfather bought as a runoff to his farm down the road. And then dad bought that or he can then bought half of Ahi Rail, which then created tea path. What was the family attitude? Because uh, obviously with the farming, uh, all the family has to be involved, the whanau. Um, were they very supportive? Was it uh, the right decision in their minds as well? Yeah. Yeah, no, it was. I mean, I mean, they could all see kind of what, you know, once I start explaining, you know, what's coming in terms of the environmental um, restrictions and, yeah, just the sheer, just the steepness and kind of the fencing costs. So it was just getting too much it was just yeah we, we couldn't really live you know you're always struggling so it's like well why are we battling this when we go off and do something else and as to your region you're of course you're a gisborne wairua region which has been totally hammered um how how is it faring uh, uh, things very slowly sort of coming around a bit and the funding helping hopefully it is the funding is helping a little bit i mean I mean, realistically, I mean, ten grand isn't going to go far when my mm. culvert that got washed away cost twenty five grand. Mm. So, so and then you count all the you know fencing up here is you know twenty five dollars a meter, so mm. it's twenty five grand a k. But I mean, it's yeah, every little bit helps, and we've. But I mean, our major thing at the moment is access. You know, we've still got mm. farms that have locked away you know who knows when they're going to get a you know actual mm. access out because the whole bridge has disappeared mm. you know slips everywhere it's just and the land's still moving that's i mean that's that's the problem it's kind of i mean the poor roading guys must be tearing their hair out because they'll clear a road and then come back the following day and another slips come down on it yeah. so it's yeah so i mean but yeah, hopefully we can get access to Hawke's Bay in the next three, four months, which will take a bit of pressure off the stock concerns, because that's, mm. that's a, yeah, because we, that's a major cost, because it's just, mm. can only go north. That's a it's massive, 
awfully long time for the animals on the truck. Yeah. So it's kind of, you know, we're almost sort of nearly breaching the Animal Welfare Act in terms yeah. of time. So, but MPI's being really good. They're kind of running around trying to figure out this, can we use sale yards as depots so we can get the animals off, give them 12 yeah. hours break, a bit of food, a bit of water, and then we'll yeah. chuck them back on the next day. So, but again, that's a, it's a logistical nightmare. <laughs> 